Welcome to Miniatures.de, your military miniatures magazine. In this issue, we are going to convert an overly heroic SHE 1 to 70 second scale Soviet infantryman to a less conspicuous and more useful bread and butter pose. While this miniature is nicely sculpted, there are five of them in every set and they would look strangely choreographed if we deployed them in the same unit. So let's keep one hero of the Soviet Union intact and convert the other four to very useful extras for war games and dioramas. We begin by cutting both arms off at the shoulder, making sure that no small parts vanish into thin air so that we can use them again later. Now we can play around with the parts and determine if these arms may be rearranged to create a convincing pose or if we had better use spare parts from another miniature. In this case it looks like repositioning one or both arms may actually do the trick. The right arm needs little trimming to ensure a good fit before we can test this idea by welding the arm in place temporarily. The miniature is held in place by pressing it into a lump of plasticine. Now we can position the arm and weld it to the shoulder. When the regulated soldering iron is set to 7 on a scale of 10, the heated spatula goes through the plastic like butter and permanently fuses the parts. Using the tip of the heated spatula, we can further strengthen and smoothen the join, making sure that the reconstructed shoulder looks as realistic as possible. If there isn't enough material to sculpt the proper shoulder, we simply take a sliver of plastic off the figure space and apply the melting material where it's needed. Using a sharp blade, we can carve the upper arm and shoulder into shape. That done, the join is again smoothed over to hide the obvious traces of the blade. With the right arm in place, we now follow the same procedure to attach the left arm. Once that arm is held in place temporarily, we can permanently fuse the join, fixing the arm in the desired position until the plastic hardens again. Here too, we need to add molten plastic material to reconstruct the shoulder and upper arm. The same technique may be used to sculpt wings, swallows' nests or fringed epaulettes for 18th and 19th century miniatures.
Notice that the left hand rests on top of the Pepe Shah submachine gun, which is not how a soldier would actually carry this weapon. So we need to flip the wrist. It would have been great if we could simply melt the elbow and then rotate the forearm, but it doesn't seem to work that way. Instead, we need to cut the forearm off, flip it over and solder it back on. Of course, the forearm is so short, we can only hold it in place with tweezers. Again, we just need to weld the forearm into position any which way we can. The proper alignment will be done later, when we permanently fuse this join. In fact, we might assemble an entire miniature like a mannequin first, and not worry about the final sculpting until much later, when we're completely happy with the new pose. So now that the forearm is in place, we can go ahead and weld the hand in position to support the barrel of the Pepe Shah. Now the rest of the work is just a matter of carving a few folds into the clothing and making sure that the arms and shoulders look as convincing as possible. The advantage of using a heated dental wax spatula for this kind of work is that the sculpting can be done in very small steps, one fold at a time, until we're happy. The more time and patience we invest here, the less likely the miniature is going to look like a cobbled together zombie or Frankenstein monster. Of course, if we wanted to create that creepy zombie anatomy, we might be happy to weld a number of mannequins together in strangely contorted poses. The left shoulder still appears to be unrealistically padded, so we need to shave a little material off and sculpt the shoulder again with the spatula. So this is what our converted hero of the Soviet Union looks like, now that we've turned him into a less enthusiastic member of the human wave attack. Thank you for watching. For more information, please visit our website at miniatures.de.